When Mendeleev decided to organize all the elements into a table, he discovered that certain behaviors repeat periodically. That's what's up next on PS100. Considering the complexity of the world around us, it's hard to imagine how anyone could map out all the different types of atoms. But that's exactly what Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev did back in the 1860s. How did he do it? Well, he noticed certain elements behaved or reacted in similar ways, so he grouped them together in columns, from lightest to heaviest. We call these columns groups. Each group has elements that are similar. He also found that the groups could be lined up so that the masses of their respective elements increased from left to right. The rows this created are called periods. But there were some empty gaps in Mendeleev's table, so he did some calculations and predicted the discovery of those missing elements, along with the characteristics they'd have. Today, we know of almost twice as many elements as Mendeleev and his contemporaries did, so the table has had to grow substantially. On a very basic level, you can divide up the periodic table into three types. Noble gases, metals, and nonmetals. Noble gases don't react with other elements. Metals conduct heat and electricity, and they flatten into sheets or stretch into wire very well. Nonmetals don't. This expanded and fine-tuned table owes a great debt to Mendeleev's work. And even with all these additions to the table, we've even discovered some repeating patterns that fit in nicely with Mendeleev's original. Like ionization energy and atomic size, for example. Ionization energy is the amount of energy it takes to knock an electron off an atom to make it a positively charged ion. It turns out ionization energy increases slightly from the bottom to the top of a group, and dramatically from the left to the right in each period. It's easiest to knock electrons off of a francium atom, and hardest to knock one off of helium. Atomic size, or volume, increases in the opposite direction. Helium takes up the least amount of space, while francium, which hasn't been measured yet, is expected to take up the most. Just to be clear, that doesn't mean larger atoms have more mass than other atoms. Atomic mass is different than atomic size. When we say an atom is large, we're just saying its outer electron shell takes up more space. That's it for this episode, but you'll find more science and research opportunities for BYU undergrads in the description below.